of the uh, uh, spray field system. And I, I apologize for not bringing uh, enough copies for everybody. However, I will turn these over and they can make, I've got more at home. And it, it, it has, there has been a lot of study and a lot of reports uh, in reference to this issue about the, uh, the effects of this as far as contaminating uh, uh, the water table, even the environment. Uh, there's uh, fumes that come off of this. I can read through all this stuff and eat up all my time, but I think you guys would probably get more out of it if you read it through yourself and took your time with it instead of me trying to narrate it for. Uh, I just, uh, there again, I don't claim to be a farmer, however, I, I purchased this stuff for this property for, for a retirement home, and now I'm looking at the retirement time, and I, I don't want to be afraid to build a house out there and not be able to drink the water. Uh, that's my main concern. And I, I want to thank all of you for listening to my uh, concerns, and I will leave you these uh, reports here from the uh, NRDC. And thank you very much for your time and your attention. Do you have a copy for Mr. Leach? Do you have a copy for Leach? Well, I've got these copies right here, and they're for two card different card scenarios. Card I was going to hand them over to perhaps he'd make some copies. He will, and he'll give you one a copy of Mr. Beecham. Mr. Beecham? Greg Beecham, for the applicant. Uh, Mr. Pittsburgh, is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, just to reiterate, that 10 inch supply pipe at one time was discussed with uh, the EP. That's off the table. That's not going to happen. If, if this gets approved as, it, as it's been applied for, then once it's approved, that pipe could go, then you've got the approval to go ahead and lay it regardless, right? Even if you, you can tell me you're not going to do it. But once you've got the on paper that you're approved, what's going to say that you're not going to? It's not on the application with the EP. I think that would have to also be a special use. That would have to come for us also, if that was to happen. Okay, uh, so if you're not going to uh, lay the supply pipe, then there's not going to be any spray operation uh, conducted in that area? Other than what's being conducted. Well, this is the reason why I drove five hours to get up here to, to educate myself on what's going on. I still have my concerns, sir. However, you, you gave me a little uh, a little bit of breathing room. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Merrily Malwitz Gypsum. Could you speak up a little bit? Yeah. Sure. Just a couple things regarding the spray field operation that you all are discussing here. I want you all to know that the Santa Fe River is compromised. Uh, our nitrate levels are extremely high. In fact, I just looked, um, I just sent you guys the same uh, report that I got from the DEP because they've been monitoring our river. The nitrates associated with agriculture and with human waste too. And actually, the, the letter part of what I just sent you is really about human. Uh, issues, but the, the attachments that I sent you are more important for this quasi-judicial hearing. And in the attachment, uh, you will see at the 47 bridge, it's, um, the levels of nitrates are 0.71, and our river is supposed to be 0.35. So it's twice as high as it needs to be. And actually further down at Cow Creek, even though we haven't actually pushed them to study, we are going through now. Um, they're even higher from what I've read over time. Uh, within the last 60 years, the nitrate levels have been very high there. And it's all associated with this type of farming that exists in this corridor. When I was driving out there the other day, I, I got to see that it's not just this one farm. You have a lot of uh, dairy farming operations that are occurring here, and you're having runoff coming in not only to the Santa Fe River, but you're also having it come into the Suwannee River. So um, I would implore you, <laughs> not to allow spray fields, which are basically concentrations of fecal and urine going out to a, a wetland, going leaching, going into our waterways, running off into our waterways, and ending up in our streams and rivers and springs. So um, 
the report that I gave you should actually be telling of that, that we do have a nitrate associated with exactly what you're talking about. Thank you. So, so you submitted an email? Yeah, I just sent it now. Yes, just sent it. Okay, we need to get one from Mr. Beecham and email sent it to you. I don't know the board has. Sorry. I don't know either. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, she said she just sent you. Yeah. I mean, I just the second. <laughs> Technology is amazing. So I'm sorry that it, it it comes with this time, but after he said, you know, that he wanted to have facts. That well, is a fact. Yeah, yeah. Like that's not a very done. good way to do it. It needs to be presented as evidence to the board uh, for right. their consideration with a copy of the constitution. I understand. Okay. Thank you. Is there any way, Ms. Patty, can you open that up and make a copy for us? I would love to have it. Could you open up our email, Ms. Patty? Yeah, it would, I mean, be, um, it would be the first document, not the Bloom Association, but actually the one that has lab results on it. That way, also, we can give it's an Excel format. Lab results of the Santa Fe River regarding nitrate levels and other contaminants. Yeah. Oh. Um, Mr. Bateson, do you have any questions? I may have it. Okay. Great to meet you again. Was it an applicant? Um, We're going to try to get that printed out. So okay, I still have to make the same objection. Yes, there's nothing. I understand her concerns and I appreciate her concerns, but there's been no testimony from her or anyone else so far except possibly this one that would, could. You could consider it as competent and substantial evidence as it applies to this application. There are opinions and uh, feelings, but not competent and substantial evidence. Just to be very clear, this comes from the DEP. Pardon me? Just to be very clear, this is not our testing, this is the DEP testing. Can you well, say it to what us? What you were saying was your personal feelings, and you're saying it's backed up by the memo or whatever it was that, that I haven't seen. So I have to make that objection at this time. Okay. Thank you. All right, Mr. Lane. Uh, Ms. Jane McGuffin. Good afternoon, Jane Nagaki, Manning Springs. I'm speaking on behalf of myself and my husband, who is here. I'm here, County Commissioner, Chairman Lankford. Um, we're just urging you to deny the special use request. Um, we believe that uh, the zone uh, for A6 for silviculture and grass should be upheld. Um, there was a reason that the county made its planning um, decision to, to protect this land from intensive agriculture. And that reason is, is that Wapasasa Flats area very permeable, it's an environmentally sensitive area, and to allow intensive agriculture there um, would really put the aquifer further at risk. Uh, we know that there's uh, been over pumping of the aquifer combined with the drought, um, and those two things have decreased the flow of water um, to Banning Springs, and, which is in the basin of the Wakasasa Flats. Um, we were just at the springs yesterday. Um, there's more river water in the springs than spring water. The water's no longer crystal blue, it's brown, um, and it's full of slimy algae um, that isn't characteristic of a first order spring. Um, it's no longer a first order spring. Um, right on the bulletin board outside, the uh, Springs Pavilion. Um, it notes that it used to be a first magnitude spring pumping you know, many more gallons of water a day. For about the last 10 years, the spring has been a second magnitude spring. It's not putting out the water that it used to. And that spring is fed by water that comes from the Wakasasa plants. So um, we just urge you to enforce your own zoning. Um, you are the body to do that. You are the planning and commissioners in charge of protecting that land. And so we just support what your own county planner has said um, to deny the special use permit. Um, thank you. Thank you.
Great region, same objection as to the competency of the evidence. They are expressing some common thoughts and some common sense things, but it's not testimony that can be backed up scientifically as it applies to this application. Next we have uh, Mary Ann Bennett. And for my three minutes to my husband, and just add to his time. Thank you. Second night. Um, <coughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, ma'am. This is Mary. Yes, ma'am. And just so you know, he has all the the applicant has all the time they want. Oh, yes, thank you. Then I'll decline. Okay. Facts. I did not make this up. This is from 
some of the people that know their geology. The flats is like a big clay saucer. It holds water in a wet year until enough collects that it flows off the edges in all directions. Now during a wet year, such as the hurricanes of 98, water flows into nearby swallows and ponds, such as Water's Lake. In this area, water tends to flow north and into Cow Creek down the center of the flat, and then to the Santa Fe River. For these reasons, the land use element developed in the early 90s by our commissioner designated the flats as a silviculture area with extremely limited use of other agricultural activities. Here we see some drowned sorghum, <clears throat> the effects of excessive water from Storm Debbie back in the fall of the fall. The brown doesn't show up quite as good in this lighting, but it's basically drowned. The ag agent states it only takes about a week to drown its field crop, demonstrating the folly of planting crops in the flats. And this particular two sections of land, three and four, prohibits crops due to soil type anyhow. There is very little A or B soils in those two sections. And there's a little bit of A soil over there in section five. And if you look at the USDA soil <coughs> conservation book, that's the expert testimony. And you will not find the well-drained soils that permit a row crop, which would be like tomatoes or melons, between the silviculture rotation. And that's from our land use element, also expert testimony. Now, when I was there, I rolled down the windows take a shot from the shoulder, and the flies moved in. And this is out in the middle of nowhere, no cows around. There were so many flies in those few minutes that even opening the windows for the next three miles failed to blow them out. Dumping manure is ideal fly habitat. This photo of the slime, um, Water from Storm Debbie in the section uh, section three of North Florida Holstein's tends to flow east near State Road 232 due to the elevation, and then it heads again north. And this shot is from an Ag 5 area along the southeast 30th Avenue. The slime shows here without smell, noted by the photographer, which was basically like a sewer. And again, intensive agriculture, such as spreading manure, is not allowed in the flat. Here's a drawing on top of the water management's flood map. And the flood plain map shows the excessive wet areas of sections three through five. And the greenish, and they look sort of grayish here, those are considered wetlands by the Swanee River Water Management District. And you don't hardly see anything there that you could plant tomatoes anyhow. Here's an aerial of what it looks like on Google. And I guess you could say Google is expert testimony. It shows the many areas of the same sections with the buffers around the cypress heads cleared in the cropland, which is also a bill press violation. Uh, it should be a 500 foot buffer around those wetland areas. And some of them are totally obliterated if you really examine it closely. There are several state and federal laws 
prohibiting conversion of wetlands into cropland. And Mr. Lawyer, I'm sure that's considered expert testimony. I just can't quote the numbers. This is a view from County Road 232 showing a shop on the north. Now the main dairy, <coughs> leaving the Wasatch Flats, has expanded into a non-contiguous 2,255-acre set of parcels without obtaining a special exception required in Gilchrist since 1994. The number of cattle is huge. It's managed as a factory farm. Now, I have hauled my horse as far as Mississippi on the west and Pittsburgh on the north for endurance competition. Seldom have I seen anything to equal North Florida Holstein's vision of life on the farm. That black spot is a loose turkey. These silent bunkers are across from the shop with tarps and tires, which probably are not cut to drain to provide ideal mosquito breeding. A cedar buffer would be considerate to shield those of us who appreciate family farms. Such was required when Watson obtained a special exception turnout theory. No photo can demonstrate what these living conditions do for the nose, miles around. Hydrogen sulfide is actually toxic in large enough doses. Ask the kids at the Bell schools what they know about the smell. The 24-7 factory barns with the huge fans showing the need to keep the air moving here. The government, this, the county, missed this code violation as these barns were constructed since ag does not require a building permit, and the county really didn't realize what was going on for these kinds of lapses, or you should say. The standing water here on 129 probably contributes to nit nitrates in the aquifer. Can't prove it. This I could prove. They were spreading manure in the rain, which is kind of a questionable practice. This factory relies on county roads, not farm trails, to do their work at 15 miles an hour. Over on County Road, or on Southwest 22nd Court, just south of Bell. I wonder maybe if that was your ag one area. These pits are dug for bedding sand, as I understand it. The pits on <coughs> County Road 240 needed a permit for that contractor over there. Then the dirty bedding is returned to an area somewhere near the background well. I just had to show you all the fox squirrel. They're in danger. And this factory, I'm sorry, this factory operation has demonstrated, do it my way as we please. Our county owes them nothing. All right. You need to, thank you. You need to sit down. We have um, call someone else, Mr. Beecham. Thank you. you. Have any? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Beecham. Great to meet you, Mr. <coughs> Applicant. Um, I'd like to point out that she did not say or approve that Mr. Benick and Norfolk Holsteins has ever been cited for a wetland bath violation. 
It's her opinion. It's not expert testimony. A lot of what she testified to, had she brought the folks she was quoting and citing, might have been expert testimony, but it can't be considered here today. And I'm going to pass on the rest of some of her tongue-in-cheek comments. May I say a photo speaks a thousand words? Um, you have someone else to call? Are there anyone else uh, that have, has filled out a card that hasn't had the opportunity to speak? And did we ever get that one email? Did you ever pull it up? To give yes. Yes. Now, pardon me? Yes. Stand to stand to did you ever get it printed out? Um, right. you, if you'll give it to the clerk, please. Do we, have we been through all of our cards yet? We've gone through all the cards. Okay, is there anyone else that did not fill out a card? Um, we'll need to um, fill out the card so we can recognize you. If you would like to speak and have not spoken yet. Okay. So now we're going to go to the um, rebuttal by the staff. Laura, did you pass this note if you want to address it? It's for you. Oh, for me? Um, um, you know, I didn't, didn't intend it. I didn't intend it to be read into the record. It's just for your information. Okay. Um, now, this is the, uh, the not, this is the nutrient study that we that we're right now getting. Did you state for the record what you're looking at? Um, we're looking at um, nutrient content of the Santa Fe nutrient study, January 2013. And I'm, I'm caught up, but I cannot see that. I mean, I can read just the I can see the numbers, but um, it's very small. Could you come back up for a second? Mm -hmm. Just give me a second. And just so the um, public knows real quick, Commissioner Thomas, we can ask anyone to come back up and, um, <laughs> and we can um, do what we need to. <laughs> Specifically, which ones of these monitoring wells will you At try the bottom, to direct us to? I'm directing you to the 47 one. It's a very kind of toward the bottom. And the nitrate, I believe, is the green column. And the nitrates are the ones that we should take issue with. Um, and actually, the bottom column, if you look all the way at the end, we also take issue with the dissolved oxygen level. Also, attributed to um, high algae content in our group. The more algae, the higher the oxygen levels, and then the worse it is for our, our um, fish and the higher the dissolved oxygen level, the higher the number in that column, the worse it is. That's correct. Yeah. The, the more depth and decay of uh, the biota, the flora and fauna, the animals, plant, native plants, the higher the oxygen, the worse the level is for growing. So is, is, your, is your assertion that this is coming from the north Florida? Our, assertion, our assertion is that it's coming from agricultural um, runoff from agriculture at large, at general, large. And not specific to this. Well, our concern specifically regarding this particular permit or this particular application of waste on a wetland is that it will increase that load, which is already compromised, and that's that's why we're objection objecting to this permit, is because it will increase the nutrient loading already compromised on our river. We're already an impaired water body with TMDLs, which are the total maximum daily loads that the DEP created in 2008. They already called us an impaired water body. So um, for more loads to take in to those wetlands, if we have more loading and concentrated loading, this isn't just a few cows on the field. <laughs> this is a wastewater being discharged onto a field, which is a concentrated level. We're concerned that that will increase these nutrient loads that are already high. And it's not just this permit, but it's all permits in general. If these lines and bait come from a test <coughs> well or just test from the Santa Fe River? Test from the Santa Fe River. Do you tell me where those tests were pulled at? Those, the, the, the 47 ridge one is really the one that I want you to be looking at. And 47 is toward the bottom. There are many um, tests, and I, actually some of those are wells. Some of them are wells, now that I think about it. But the bottom one, the 47 bridge. 47, 47 bridge. Correct. And that column all the way across is the one that, right, is the one that I'm more concerned about than any of the other testing. Because they're high. You can see some really high 
but, but the 47, and the reason for that is based on the fact that the Wakasasa Flats, that general area between the 47 and further south on Santa Fe River, or further down river, is what will be the recharge for the Wakasasa Flats. Anything upriver from that are other issues associated with the river. I mean, other land uses, let me be clear, other land uses impacting the river are upstream, and 47 downstream are associated with these land uses in this area. And our river, to give you a uh, perspective, the, inherent, or the, the quality of our river is supposed to be at 0.35, is what the DEP through the TNPLs have said that's what they want to be maintaining. Um, where, I, where would these here in the bank notes? 10, 32, and 25? I refer that question to Pete Butt, if I'm allowed to. Um, okay, Mr. Pete. Or, you got two glasses. Mr. Pete, would you like to ask a question? Are you asking me to answer a question? Yes, sir. If you'll come to the podium, state your name for the record. Mr. Um, again, I'm coming just to speak to your question here and identify what the sheet. Okay. Are you familiar with this sheet? I'm sorry? Are you familiar with this sheet? Yes. Um, my name is Pete Budd. I'm with Carson Environmental Services in regards to that data you have in your hand. That is uh, uh, the first sampling round for the uh, uh, Middle Santa Fe uh, Nutrient Fate Transport Study, uh, in which uh, until last year, uh, 20 wells were uh, cited. I was part of that project working for URS Corporation uh, for DEP, who was the contractor for that work. I was part of the DEP uh, uh, Restoration Focus Area, again, uh, Middle Santa Fe River Nutrient Fate Transport Study, which is part of the wider BMAP project. Uh, that was the initial sampling of the 20 wells. Uh, four springs and three surface water stations. Uh, I was uh, present for the uh, sampling at the uh, surface and spring water stations in one of the wells and uh, was working peripheral to the uh, URS crew that was doing that sampling. Uh, again, Marilee's pointing out her number of concerns, the one that was taken down at the 47 bridge, showing overall nitrate, nitrate effect into the system at large. Uh, the, the 20 wells um, basically are scattered throughout the uh, uh, High Springs Gap Spring Shed, uh, you know, basically straddling the county line at a variety of sites. We picked, uh, again, not to get into this thing in specific, but we picked a variety of agricultural and non-agricultural and residential sites. And uh, I don't know if that's enough information regarding it. It's bona fide information. The second sampling round was just completed. I think, I don't know if they're finishing this week, but the last two weeks or so. And uh, we have instrumentation going in at some of the springs as part of that project. And there is, uh, uh, isotopic nitrate data coming from that first sampling and these uh, subsequent samplings that's uh, probably due out any day now. Uh, anything else I can answer on that specific? I would like to know where these three of them are located. Uh, the, let's see, the, about the top of my head here, yeah, I believe the uh, highest one, the 32, is uh, as well was sited at the north end of the Watson Dairy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not I'm sure the other ones you're talking about. Uh, give me some numbers. 10, 25. 25, I think, and again, I think that, uh, was that number seven? Um, I think that may have been uh, on the north end of the Flatwoods Dairy in Alachua County. And what's the next one, the 10, I believe? Yeah. The 10 is on the county right of way, well north of the Tompkins Dairy at Waters Lake. These not labels are higher. I'm sorry? Down the east of them, they are where we live. I, I can't speak to I just I speak to those numbers. I, I, I'm not sure what you're talking about. It's, there's 11 and 12 and a 7. Yeah, and it, again, those are on the east side. I think east what Kevin's saying, the higher readings look like or appear to be on the east side of the flats. Well, they are, all of these wells are on the east side of the flats. Yeah, they travel the county line basically on the east side. None of these are on the west side of the flats. Yeah, again, like I remember earlier, I was trying to point out maybe it's or use of the thing to point out the higher levels in the river that's not meeting the 0.25 standard that's been set by the state uh, part of the map based on the action plan. But on our side, it looks like we're running pretty good. Uh, again, I don't know if numbers specifically. I can look them up on you know, some of the spring discharges are like at Hard Otter, some others. I'm sure the DEP or the uh, Water District has records on those. They typically do. 
but uh, I'm not working on it. Again, I'm a data collector, project manager, working in contract. Uh, I'm not a PE or a PG to answer those specific questions or interpretations. But um, again, it, you know, there's no study that I know of uh, right now that maybe compliance wells on that. And you will have west side of the flats and, and other public wells and things that they redeem samples. Any more questions for Mr. Pete? Anybody has follow-up questions? Get a hold of me. Yes, sir. Thank no, you. Office, yes. Thank you. for the applicant, uh, just to state the obvious, uh, none of those numbers tell you anything about what's going on at the Piedmont track. There are test wells on the Piedmont track that Mr. Bennett will inform you of. But what that went on, we're all concerned about the rivers and the springs. But what that specific testimony was about tells you nothing about what's going on at the Piedmont track. Is there anything anywhere that does? Mr. Beach. Pardon me? Yes. Is there any, anything anywhere that does tell us what's going on? Yes, Mr. Bennett's going to speak to that. Well, should we let Mr. Bennett speak? Well, we, uh, Scott, if you fill out a card, I'll If you come up, um, state your name for the record, and we'll um, just need to fill out a card, and we write it out for you. That's up to you, Yeah, just if you'll fill out the card, Mr. Crosby, um, you'll, um, you'll need to do the timer. Can you fill out the card first or can I speak? You can go ahead and speak, but can you do the before you speak when you set the timer? You've got three minutes, y'all. I'll take that one. Well, on this data sheet, y'all are uh, the Scott Tucker. I'm a conservation technician for the Water Management District. I'm focused on the um, D map area that these people are referring to. This data here, I've seen it for the last six, eight weeks. Um, the gentleman was right. They are having some preliminary round of testing. They have just did their second sampling. Um, basically, the BMAP area is everything east of the Wapasasa Flats out to the eastern edge of the Water Management District, which is around the Jonesville area, and it goes down to Archer. Um, this operation you're considering tonight is outside the BMAP area. The um, preliminary data here, here they, they've got, was supposed to be used as a baseline to see what the as they get through the monitoring process, which way the nitrate levels and the other levels of the oxygen and stuff are moving you know, over time. Uh, I'm associated with a program called the Best Management Practices, which is uh, in, implemented through the Department of Agriculture. And we are addressing a lot of the agricultural operations in that BMAP area to get them into compliance with the best management practices and certify them. Once they get in that program, they will be given a presumption of compliance with state water quality standards per DEP when they participate in our program. But this operation here is outside the BMAP area, outside the registration focus area. That's why you're seeing, excuse me, that's why you're seeing your numbers in the western part of the district most of the flats is like they're not concerned as much there as they are from the east of the flats back up river. Thank, Thank you. you. And I'm, excuse me. Now, I do know where all those monitor wells are located. Okay. I have a chart on those. I don't have it with me. Right. But you know provide, where provide it if you want. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Um, you have a card if um, you'll give it to Mr. Crossman, please. Give the card to Mr. Cosby. Yeah, you already permitted to speak because my name was on the sponsor's right. to add to her time. Pardon me? My name was right. on the sponsor's. Am I also allowed no. to speak? No, sir, because that's you... what I thought. Yes, sir. Right. Um, we have another, somebody else wants to speak that you need to turn your card in and um, that way your name will be read. in mind that our community is based on agriculture and as Mr. Scott said that uh, keep in mind the BMP programs that these farmers are already in compliance with and uh, just remember that the environment's our farmer's best friend and works with it every day and he's not 
it out there to harm it. That's what makes him a loop. Thank you. Thank you. Right, is there anybody else that um, would like to speak that you have not filled out a card? Right, Mr. Light? Yeah, Mr. Benning, I got to move. All right, good. Okay. Don Benning. As uh, Mr. Beecham pointed out, uh, and, and I want to be sure you have it straight. Between us and the county, there's confusion on the A1 designation. The A1 <coughs> property that our county planner is talking about should be grandfathered in. It's, it's, it's a mistake on both of our parts. Uh, she just discovered it this week. We, we weren't aware of it. We always assumed it was part of the A2. You're well aware that that spray field was there since 1990. The plan took place in uh, January of 94. So uh, on, the, on the question of the A1, it was all grandfathered in. It's being used for exactly the same purposes today as it was in 1990 and at the time the plan was put in. So I, I don't think we should have any issues on that. It was, it was a mistake. Uh, uh, we missed it. Uh, the county so missed it. It you, happened. What you're saying um, is you owned it in 1990? You owned yeah, it? Yeah, sure did. Okay, so you owned that piece of property in 1990. No, I think what she's saying is if we, if we elect to, uh, we, need to, we need to bring it up to current zoning. Correct. To correct it. Uh, but, but it was right. grandfathered in. Right, but we and still we need to, missed. she says, we, you know, we still need to change it today, too. You know, just bring it up to correct oh, zoning. Correct, right. correct. And she, and she didn't, I mean, you know, she said she had no problem with that, you know, bringing it to the A, A2, bringing A1 to A2. Okay. Just so it's current. It's sure. Correct. Sure. I'm a little, Mr. Benick, I'm, I'm just a little confused and we'll clear this up real quick because I think they're discussing rezoning it to cure the problem anyway. But the three A1 parcels, wasn't one parcel purchased in 1998 and two were purchased in, in 2012? Uh, no. The three, the one, and, and uh, as I, Applications that uh, we complied with the county zoning because the county zone. 
That was a, definitely a mistake on our part. I don't request a zoning change anyplace else. Within the A6, civil culture and agriculture land use classification, we all agree. Intensive agricultural uses are prohibited. We, we totally agree. Intensive agriculture is defined as concentrated animal feeding. We have no intentions and never have of concentrated uh, animal feeding on the uh, A6 designated <coughs> properties. What, what we have to get straight is that A6 prohibits a use that requires a wastewater permit. It prohibits a use that requires a wastewater permit. But, but listen, nothing, and I say it again, nothing says the property is not zoned for intention intensive agriculture can't be part of a permit. There's nothing that says that in any place. The fact that it's part of a permit does not change its zoning. And you don't want it to change its zoning. You don't want DEP uh, setting Gilchrist County zoning regulations. If a property is used for what it's zoned for, what difference does it make if it's part of a permit? None. No domestic animals are located on the Piedmont track. Any special use that applies to the main dairy, uh, any special use we're requesting applies to the main dairy and the main dairy only. Uh, are you going to be able to get up the, okay, uh, uh, bring up the other one, please. There's two, two shots. That one, okay. And uh, there's a huge environmental advantage to the Piedmont property being part of a permit. One, it's regularly monitored by outsiders, particularly DEP, and it has regular water testing. There is no other part of the Wakasasa Flats that can claim that. And, and we just looked at that map, I don't want you to change the zoning on I don't want a notch where there's a different zone. We're not requesting that. We're asking you to leave as it as it is and let it use it for, for what uh, it's zoned for. This is way beyond what's required. No one else uh, is, is, can give you uh, the data on the water going under their property. We can, and we're going to show you that in a minute. Growing grass does not require a permit, and that's what we're doing. We're growing grass. It's being planted to a perennial grass as, as fast as we can uh, get it planted and get the fertility plot. Do any of you Gentlemen, Kendrick, uh, uh, and I, I know you don't, John or Todd, did any of you have a CDL license to drive a semi? None of you? You do. Does that mean, does that mean you can't drive a pickup? All right, well, we've got requirements way above what's required, and yet we're being put to tests that are uh, way beyond reasonable that we are going way beyond what is required. And the, the intent was this, that this added property would meet standards above requirements by having monitoring wells and DEP oversight. This has been done. This was volunteered. It was not required. 
All DEP requirements are met, including application rates. They tell us how much we can put on there. Now we could, we could have left that property out of the DEP permit and complied with both DEP and Gilchrist, Gilchrist County zoning regulations by the following alternatives. We could, by contract, give someone all of our nutrient material with no oversight by DEP and they could put it any place they want. We could sell that nutrient people, that nutrient material uh, to someone. They could apply it where they want with no oversight by DEP. We could sell the land and give or sell the nutrients to the new owners with no oversight. We could treat our wastewater to drinking water standards, remove the land from the permit, and then apply the treated wastewater injected with commercial fertilizer as we want with no oversight. And also, a third party could be engaged to lease the property from anyone and to contract to take the manure from us with no oversight. So we've gone way beyond the rules. We're, we're doing everything we, we can to, uh, to make this safe. And, and as some of you know that, that, that are, environmentalists, are environmentalists in here, uh, we we hold ourselves out. If you, you give us a call, we're always we're out. always willing to work with you. If you come, give us a call. Mr. We're Bennett. delighted to work with you. Mr. Bennett, you need yes. to speak to us. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, and I apologize for that. Uh, could we uh, have the next slide? <clears throat> All, all of our properties were burned out 
And we are taking it back to its original state. And if you could go back to the other slide, please. And, uh, and what, we're, what we're doing is growing grass in all of these areas. All of these other areas are fantastic places for wildlife to hide. And if you go there, the turkeys are abundant, they're bigger, they're stronger, the, the deer are fatter, they're having more twins, there's, there's otter, and there's alligators, and there's fish. It's, it's really very healthy. And we're not, we've got a long ways to go to finish putting the grass in there. But this root mat that we're building up by building up organic matter at the top of that soil is the best filtration that that land can possibly have. If my environmental friends would get with us and we start working on this kind of a program, we could start cleaning up our rivers again. <laughs> now, okay, is and is is we're well aware this uh, this zoning allows for limited agricultural uses, uh, which uh, includes the grazing of livestock. That uh, if we were to follow the standards. Uh, 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 John, as you're well aware, it's kind of a standard to put, uh, uh, what, two, two and a half animals on an acre? That means we, we could fence that, put 2,000 head there, and, and follow the zoning compliance, and, and that 2,000 head could run through the bogs and tear them up and and we're, we're, some people are trying to talk about buffers around. Do you think that those cows would worry about whether there was a buffer around those wetlands or not? We're, we're taking as good a care of that property as we can. And if you look at uh, that, that and, and of course the choices are basically to go on an A6 property, you can either go silviculture, plant trees, you can go to agriculture that, that allows the planting of grass, or you can go uh, to development units. Uh, technically, on that property, uh, we could have five homes, it could be uh, several barns, a bunch of sheds, a garage full of trucks and tractors and machineries, a sawmill, an office, a shooting range for rifles, a shooting range for pistols, a shooting range for shotguns, a, shoot, a range for archery, we could have a couple of hunting camps, we could have several communications towers, and you're telling me I can't grow grass on it? <coughs> That's all I'm asking, and we're, we're uh, another major thing that is, is going on, as uh, many of you uh, are aware, that one of the things uh, that's uh, real important uh, is trying to get rid of the invasive species. We're all very familiar with the tropical soda apple, but a big invasive species that's a real problem, in particular our timberlands here, is coggin grass. That, that property, when we got it, was polluted and still polluted with coggin grass. We're getting rid of all that. That's an invasive species. And so uh, we look at, we're cleaning up the water, we're improving the wildlife, we're, private, we're doing an economically viable, viable enterprise, and we're asking you to leave the zone just like it is. Thank you. Just remind me what's the next step. Uh, we need a rebuttal uh, about Ms. B.
with your comprehensive plan and its definition of intensive agriculture. I'm not a frivolous or undecided person, so I tend to make my interpretations based on a lot of thought and 